Hello. Today, I tell you the history of Dubrovnik. Thank you for your interest, subscribe and share this video. Dubrovnik is the largest Croatian city and port in Dalmatia, the region of the southern Adriatic coast of Croatia. One of the oldest cities on the Adriatic coast, Dubrovnik has a unique and interesting history. In the Middle Ages, Dubrovnik was not just a city, but a city-state with a developed trade, fleet and diplomacy. The beginning of history, as usual, is hidden behind the prescription of centuries and overgrown with numerous legends. The most common and official version of the origin of the city is as follows. Once upon a time there was a Roman city of Epidaurus on the site of the modern resort town of Kavtat, near modern Dubrovnik. Presumably, Epidaurus originated as an ancient Greek colony. By the 4th century AD, the city was already an important maritime and commercial center. In the year of 614, the conquerors, the tribes of Avars and Slavs, invaded Epidaurus and defeated it. The surviving population fled and hid in the surrounding forests, as well as on the rocky island of Laws, which means, cliff, in ancient Greek. The island was separated from the land only by a narrow strait, but due to the rocky environment, it was difficult to approach it both from the sea and from the land. Epidaurus refugees mixed with the population of the island and founded a city, which was named Ragusa or Ragusium. By the 9th century, Dubrovnik had become a well-fortified fortress that withstood a 15-month siege by the Saracens with the help of the fleet of the powerful Byzantine Empire. Under Byzantine rule, the city quietly developed during the centuries from 7 to 12. At the same time, a Croatian settlement grew on land opposite the island, surrounded by an oak grove and therefore called Dubrovnik. Trade, friendship and kinship ties gradually strengthened between Ragusa and Dubrovnik the Croatian and Romanesque populations mixed, the strait between the cities became shallower under the influence of sea sediments, and by the end of the 11th century it was simply covered with earth. In the place where the island joined the land, the main street of Dubrovnik, Straden now passes. So, by the 12th century, both settlements were united, protected by a single fortress wall. In the 13th century, suburban areas were also blocked by a wall, and Dubrovnik received exactly the coverage in which we see the old city today. Due to the predominance of the Croatian population by the 14th century, the city finally became Croatian in spirit. And that is why Dubrovnik was destined to become the medieval center of Croatian culture, and above all, literature and the Croatian language. The further history of Dubrovnik, which became a city-state, one of the smallest, but the strongest, independent and successful states of the Adriatic region in the Middle Ages, has already been well documented. A highly developed fleet and trade with developed mainland states and seaports very quickly made Dubrovnik a serious competitor to its powerful neighbor, the Republic of Venice. Therefore, Venice repeatedly tried to conquer Dubrovnik, and in year of 1205 it managed to do it. The city was headed by a prince and a bishop from Venice, who appointed members of the Great Vesh of the city. But during the Venetian rule, the urban population of Dubrovnik rebelled against the Venetian rule several times. In the 13th century, the expansion of the territory of Dubrovnik began. The city acquired several islands of Lastovo and Let, as well as the Pelesak Peninsula. In year of 1358, Dubrovnik finally freed itself from the domination of Venice and recognized the supreme authority of the Hungarian Croatian rulers. They did not interfere in the internal structure of the city, the affairs of trade and navigation, which led the city-state of Dubrovnik to complete independence, and the ancient name Communitas Raguzina or the Commune of Dubrovnik was transformed into Respublika Raguzina, or Republic of Dubrovnik. Orientation to maritime trade led Dubrovnik to flourish. The rapid growth of shipbuilding, the priority of using its own fleet in trade, trade agreements with Egypt, Syria, Sicily, Spain, and France made the Republic the richest power in the Adriatic. In the year of 1526, the Croatian troops were defeated by the Turks, and the inhabitants of Dubrovnik stopped paying tribute to the Hungarian Croatian king. Dubrovnik has entered into cautious relations with Turkey. For their independence, the people of Dubrovnik had to regularly pay tribute and generous gifts to the Turks. But, like the Hungarian Croatian rulers, the Turks did not interfere in the internal affairs of the Republic, which testified to the high level of development of diplomatic relations of Dubrovnik. The material well-being of the Republic largely depended on the extraction and sale of minerals. The production and sale of silver and lead mined in the mines of neighboring Bosnia and Serbia brought huge income. 
From the port of Dubrovnik, these metals were sent to developed European countries. The rich residents of Dubrovnik could even afford to rent in neighboring states and acquire ownership of mines, organized the production of metals and transported them to France, Spain, Florence and Venice. Cloth making was an important branch of the economy. The silver trade with Spain made it possible to purchase high-quality Catalan wool, which was brought by sea and processed at cloth workshops and dyeing plants built in the vicinity of Dubrovnik. The resulting high-quality cloth sold well on the European market. The wealth of the Republic was also brought by the developed trade in salt extracted from large deposits nearby. Even now, salt from place called Stan highly valued both in Croatia itself and abroad. Trade, shipbuilding and woodworking in the 15 and 16 centuries reached unprecedented heights in Dubrovnik. By the middle of the 16th century, Dubrovnik already had a merchant fleet of 180 ships with a cargo capacity of 36,000 carts. Dubrovnik became one of the first states that already in the year of 1568 issued a law on insurance of ships, which also brought considerable profit to the city. As often happens in history, the well-being of citizens and financial stability led to the flourishing of science, art and crafts, which coincided with the European Renaissance. Until the 15th century, literature in Dubrovnik was created in Latin, and very successfully, in the year of 1485, the local poet Ilya Tsrivich, was awarded a laurel wreath in Rome. But already at the beginning of the 15th century, the first poems appeared in the Croatian language. Also published scientific treatises on mathematics, chemistry, physics and other applied sciences. In the fine arts of that era, magnificent examples of Renaissance painting were also created. Some canvases of the great artists of that era have survived to this day. Unfortunately, most of the picturesque heritage of Dubrovnik was damaged or destroyed due to the terrible natural cataclysm that struck the city in the 17th century. The catastrophic earthquake of year 1667 was the most terrible and destructive event in the history of Dubrovnik. The city was destroyed, thousands of citizens died in ruins and fires. Dozens of buildings, the Romanesque cathedral, magnificent Gothic and Renaissance palaces, monasteries and churches have turned into ruins. The ships in the port also suffered. Fortunately, the fortress walls almost completely withstood the impact of the elements. After the disaster, the city was recovering for a long time and difficult. Earthquake appearance changed a lot. The streets were built up with modest and similar facades in the Baroque style, shops were located on the first floors of the buildings. Only the princely palace and the Palazzo Sponza have been preserved in their original form. And yet, after the restoration, Dubrovnik once again managed to become one of the most beautiful cities in the Mediterranean. The Republic of Dubrovnik ceased to exist only in the year of 1808, under the onslaught of Napoleon's troops. With the fall of Napoleon, hopes arose for the restoration of the former republic, but instead at the Vienna Congress it was decided to give the entire territory of the Dubrovnik Republic to the Austrian Empire. During this period, Dubrovnik became a provincial city on the outskirts of a large empire, although it was still engaged in trade and navigation, but without its former glory and scope. In the 20th century, the transformation of Dubrovnik into a world tourist center gradually began. Since the middle of the century, grand hotels and large hotel complexes have been built in the city and surrounding areas. The unique history, architectural and natural beauty of the city and the surrounding area attract millions of tourists from all over the world every year. Now the old town of Dubrovnik is included in the UNESCO World Heritage Fund and is protected by it. Please. If you find this video interesting for you, subscribe and share it with other. It would be your passive contribution to the development of our channel, thank you. And wait for new releases.